Two months ago, I sent Thanavik this DM on Discord. So as a little content experiment to see whether or not I'm just a washed coach, I went on a 14 day freestyling challenge. What that means is for the past 14 days, I have exclusively been training freestyle mechanics every session I get on. Today, I'm coming back to report on the four step process I followed that got me the results you're about to see. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna drop whether or not I think it was really worth it. Before I jump into this though, if you're a returning subscriber, I wanna let you know I am currently pushing to do YouTube full time. So if you wanna join in, I'm making the announcement now. If we can hit 200K subs by the end of the year, I'm going to be dropping out of school and pursuing YouTube full time. If you haven't yet and you're looking to help me on my journey, remember subbing is completely free and you can always unsub whenever you want. But with that, let's get into the video and cover the four steps to learning how to freestyle in Rocket League. Okay, let's jump into it and talk about the four step framework that I think is the fastest way to learn freestyling. And if I actually followed this, I would have reached the point I'm at right now two times or three times as fast. Also, if you're 18 plus years old watching right now and looking for coaching, head down to the description below and DM me the word freestyling on Discord. And we can talk about how you can get early access to the third launch of my private coaching program. Anyways, let's talk step one. All right, step one that I wish I would have followed when I started learning Rocket League is get my settings right first. Specifically, when it comes to freestyling, I can tell you that from experience, there isn't one set of perfect controls that you have to follow, but there are definitely some that just will not work. So if you're currently on the default controller binds, you absolutely need to watch a settings tutorial to change your key binds and get them in check. Doesn't matter if it's mine, this is absolutely a non-negotiable. If you wanna learn freestyling, you have to have at least one directional arrow bind, one normal arrow bind, and you have to make sure each of your primary inputs, like jump, boost, or air roll are able to be pressed on your controller at the same time. Trust me, when I started playing this game, I was KBM, then I switched to controller, and I have since changed my keybinds like three times because I just didn't bite the bullet and get them right to start with. So learn from me, get your settings in check, and then move on to step two. All right, on to step two, what is the second thing you need to do to learn how to freestyle faster? It is learn the primary mechanics. Specifically, when it comes to freestyling, there are tons of components you need to bring together to say, execute something like an air dribble or a flip reset. The thing is, if you don't have the foundational skills together, when you actually try to assemble things in the end, you're going to have massive holes in your mechanics. So what I recommend you do, and this is something that once again, when I cracked, got me better so much faster, is learning the foundation before trying to learn the fancy stuff. So if you want the fastest route to learning freestyling, I think you should absolutely make it a point to practice Lethemir's rings and aerial car control to make sure you have complete control of your air roll before you even start attempting things like flip resets or air dribbling. Now, of course, it's going to take a different amount of time for everybody to learn these things. But a rule of thumb that I've set is, look, if you cannot finish Lethemir's rings in under 20 minutes while continuously air rolling, you should not be freestyling. It might be tempting to practice flip resets and air dribbles as soon as you can, but trust me, if you learn things in the right order, you will learn it faster. Now to be clear, I'm not ordering you to be miserable and grind Lathomir's rings if you absolutely hate it. What I am saying though, is if you can find fun ways to practice your aerial car control, that's not just skipping to the final step and not just practicing the double tap or the air dribble or the flip reset, I think you're actually gonna learn the mechanics way, way faster than if you didn't. That's step two. Then onto the third thing I recommend you do to learn freestyling faster. It's going to be study and practice the setup. The truth is guys, Rocket League has been around for quite a while. And if you wanna get your mechanics caught up to the players at the highest level, you've gotta put aside your ego and learn from their mistakes. 
So what I recommend you do if you're trying to learn any freestyle mechanic, or really any mechanic in Rocket League for that matter, is watch one or maybe two videos on YouTube on that mechanic before you get started. Watch these videos, study the actual setup, and take note of any little tips that players who understand these mechanics are willing to share. So step three, highly recommend you watch a tutorial on the mechanic, get down the setup, figure out the quickest way to train, say whatever the mechanic is if you don't yet know it, and specifically focus on getting that setup down as they describe it in the videos. When you do this, you're just gonna be adding another boost to how quickly you can learn the mechanic. From experience, I've learned that every mechanic has what I like to call a sticking point. For flip resets, this could be the moment right before you're trying to get the flip reset. For air dribbles, it could be right when you hit the ball off the wall and you're trying to get the setup. Or say for double taps, it could be the moment where the ball bounces off the wall and you're trying to redirect it. All that a sticking point means is the point of the mechanic where the difficulty is the highest and you usually fail. The problem up until now with training mechanics is to get to the sticking point for most mechanics, you have to go through the entire motion. When in a perfect world, it would be so much faster to just skip to the moment where you usually fail and drill that part of the mechanic specifically. Luckily, I wanna give a huge shout out to the Rocket League community and the Rocket League plugin creators specifically, because if you haven't seen it yet, this new free play checkpoint plugin is absolutely game changing when it comes to improving in Rocket League fast. If you haven't seen my video on it, I made an entire video dedicated to just this plugin and how to set it up specifically because I think it's that good. Basically, all you need to know is this plugin allows you to go through a mechanic in free play, record an exact replay of that mechanic, and then skip to the exact moment in the replay that you want to practice. From there, all you have to do is click play and you can drill the exact sticking point that you personally have for whatever mechanic it may be on repeat until you get it down. I don't think I would have been able to learn double flip resets in a tenth of the speed I have, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I am very nearly at least getting the second flip on almost all my attempts now. Okay, so now that you know my training routine and what I was following for the past 14 days, the question is, of course, was it actually worth it? The thing is though, I, I wanna give you my answer on this to tell you whether it was worth it for me, but I think the truth is, the answer is gonna be much, much different for you. Following this process was definitely helpful in getting me more comfortable with some higher level mechanics like double flip resets and flip reset musty. The real benefit though I got from practicing the double flip resets and the flip reset musties were not those mechanics specifically, but actually the lessons it taught me about car control that were kind of unrelated. Basically, training these high-level mechanics forced me into spots that I wouldn't have been put in if I hadn't been focused specifically on training those high-level mechanics. Now, for you, would I recommend you follow exactly what I did these last 14 days? Definitely not. At the end of the day, though, what matters is not just following what training routine is necessarily the best. It's about what's following the best routine that you can stick to, right? I can outline the exact steps that I think you should learn a mechanic in. But at the end of the day, if you can't stick to those steps, they don't mean anything. So my goal is that you walk away from this video understanding what you need to do to learn whatever you want to learn a little bit better. And based on what you enjoy doing, you can sort of weigh how much time you're going to put into each step. But for this video, that's really all I want to share. So for now, my name's Luke. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace, guys.